the preparation. <laughs> This is a lot of hair. Kudos to anyone with hair that's this long. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. My name is Whitney and here on my channel, we mostly explore fragrances, but I like to sometimes throw in other content here and there just for fun. So today we will be taking a dive into my collection and I will be sharing with you the fragrances I think are the most dark, vampy and mysterious. So I've got some oils, perfumes, and fragrance mists to show you, so let's get started. So first up, I'll be sharing with you perfume oils that are impressions of popular fragrances from the House of Mugler, which is pretty much dark and mysterious if you ask me. And first up, I have Angel by Mugler. This is a quite polarizing scent. To be honest, this doesn't smell like what's on the market right now in terms of what is being sold in stores. So I imagine that this impression is more closely related to the actual original Angel, which I've heard is way more potent. And what I like about this is that there's that dark quality to it coming from the chocolate, but then that earthy, as in dirt quality that comes from the patchouli. And it makes for a very unique gourmand experience, if you ask me. So yeah, so that's Angel by Mugler. So next up, we have what, what I guess could be considered a flanker of Angel, and that is Angel Muse by Mugler. This is a chocolate hazelnut patchouli scent. And what I think makes this dark and mysterious is the chocolate and the patchouli facets that really make it unique but deep at the same time. And the scent trail is bewitching. So that's Angel Muse by Mugler. So the last impression of a fragrance from the House of Mugler that I have is Alien. And again, this fragrance, this impression actually, may be more closely linked to the original Alien because I've heard a lot of people say that the Alien that's on the market right now is just, I guess, a joke compared to what it was like when it was first released. But what makes this dark and mysterious is not only the bottle, but also the jasmine, I feel, adds this dark, heady quality to it that makes this totally appropriate for this video. I keep smelling it, it's quite addictive. So this is Alien by Mugler. So next up, we have Chocolate Greedy by Montal. And what I love about this is obviously the chocolate note adds that darkness to it but the citrus note in here adds a brightness that balances out the deep quality of the chocolate note, making it quite unique, interesting smelling experience. Yeah, I really enjoy this one. So that's Chocolate Greedy by Montal. Next up is Vanille Fatale by Tom Ford. This is a spicy vanilla that I'm pretty certain has notes of leather and other notes that I don't particularly like in fragrances. But <laughs> what I do like about this is this is a unique vanilla in the sense that it's not like, at least I don't consider it to be super feminine or flirtatious, but it's quite deep and alluring and strong as hell. I wore this to bed one night and I literally woke up in the middle of the night because the smell was so overpowering. So maybe not a safe bedtime scent, but a safe cold weather scent where you're gonna be outside and you can let this baby project. So that's Vanille Fatale by Tom Ford. So next we have Hypnotic Poison by Dior. I would say that this is more of a pulled back dark sweet fragrance and I say pulled back in the sense that it's not gonna knock anyone over in an aggressive way I would say this is appropriate for intimate settings there's almond apparently coconut but girl I don't smell that but um yeah this is a beautiful scent addictive you know almost has a salty quality to my nose for some reason and I think that's possibly where the Play-Doh comparison comes to play because even when I tried it, I had to agree with people who said that it reminded them of Play-Doh. 
but in the most sexy feminine way possible <laughs> so that's hypnotic poison by dior hmm. so I, I really i'm looking at the screen and i'm like i didn't put a filter on it so is this how my video is going to turn out looking all like foggy and stuff i'm down with it though i'm down with it because i don't have to do it in editing <laughs> So next up, we have Oud Satin Mood from the house of Maison Francis Kirkjohn. And this is an Oudi rose. And to me, this pulls spicy to me. And I'm not entirely sure if there are spicy notes in here, but I'll be sure to show y'all. But what I like about this is, you know, I mean, you can tell by the color of the oil how like dark this is, but totally evening appropriate. I mean, you could wear it whenever, right? But I feel like this would shine in evening at evening events in cooler weather but yeah smells very sweet and unique so that's oud satin mood by maison francis kirkjohn so next i have an oil that i don't think is an impression of anything it's just called amber and oud and the reason i picked this one up was because i wanted to familiarize myself with the notes of amber and oud earlier on in my fragrance journey and I will say that this particular oil I had to grow to understand, but what I do like about it is the depth of both of those notes listed in the title. And this is perfect for me when I want to add depth to a fragrance and make it a little darker, especially for the evening time. So that is Amber and Oud. So next I have By the Fireplace by Maison Margiela. This is a spicy woody scent that does have the ability to transport you to the campfire. <laughs> yeah, it's smoky, sweet, but then there's a coziness to it, which I think is coming in from the cashmere note. So that's By the Fireplace by Maison Margiela. And last up for the oils, I have Kismet by Land of Oz. And I'm pretty certain that this is an impression of Karma by Lush. Don't quote me on that. What I like about this is it smells incensey to my nose, like a stick of incense. So it has those, it has a quality to it that makes me think of essential oils and other very natural ingredients which adds that mysterious quality to it for me and i do consider consider this one to be more of an evening type of scent i've worn it to bed too when i'm in that vibe of wanting to do the whole you know essential oil thing this is one i grab so that's kismet by land of oz okay so next we move on to perfume so i want to start off with a mini and that is of Modern Muse Le Rouge Gloss by Estee Lauder. What I love about this is the unique note of vinyl that is in here. It literally smells like old records, leather jackets, and cherry lip gloss. Like, I love it. I was drawn to this because of the vinyl note and I wanted to explore how it was used in a fragrance. It smells dark, vampy, and mysterious, like the title of this video. <laughs> but seriously, it it's this is a badass scent. Like just just it smells how it looks. Glossy, red, deep unique yeah i'm excited to rock this more the weather's not too cool yet for me to really feel like i can get the most out of this but i feel like this would shine with the right outfit and makeup and event so that's modern muse le rouge gloss by estee lauder <laughs> So Jasmine, like I mentioned earlier, has that mysterious quality to me. And I think I have the ultimate Jasmine fragrance, to be honest. At least this is the ultimate Jasmine fragrance in my collection. And that is Lust by Lush. This is, 
this ain't no baby jasmine this is a deep heady indolic jasmine that did not come to play i mean the juice will stay in your clothes if you mess with it yeah this is this is one that when i first tried it i was actually just shocked it did things to me in a good way yeah this is good so this is lust by lush so next up i have a fragrance that has quite a lot of notes and most of them i would consider quite dark and mysterious and this fragrance is la nuit trésor by lancome and this is the formulation that was the predecessor to what's out now and i say that because this one is the formula that contains the papyrus and the incense notes and i'm pretty sure there's plum in here too but yeah this is dark sexy sweet smoky i i fell in love with it when i first smelled it in store but then when i bought it and smelled it i'm like oh god this is too much like it felt like it wasn't for me but once I wore it on my skin and really let it do its thing it just shone <laughs> in the darkest way possible and you know obviously the bottle is just like you know come on so this is La Nuit Tresor by Lancome so next up, I have a fragrance that was on my wish list for a while, but I wasn't actually certain of how I was gonna get my hands on it just because it was a discontinued scent from a very, very long time ago. But that scent is Desire Me by Escada. And what makes this dark and mysterious is, again, it's an unusual gourmand. So it features the note of tiramisu but it's also floral at the same time. So it smells like the stems of an arrangement, a floral arrangement. And then as it dries down, the dark chocolate qualities and the coffee notes really come out. Very interesting. Definitely, I would say appropriate for, I, I see this as being like a dinner date scent, to be honest. But yeah, pretty unique scent. And that is Desire Me by Escada. Next up, I have one of the more mysterious yet wearable, in my opinion, scents in my collection. And that is Aura by Mugler. This is a green vanilla scent. And I would say it has a very fairy tale, forest, like quality to it i mean sometimes when wearing this i'm like I, I i feel like this fragrance wears me but i feel like this is one where you gotta be you have to commit <laughs> you have to commit because it's there and everyone around you will know it but it is beautiful um love the bottle as well it just has a very strange yet alluring vibe to it which I think makes it fitting for this list, and that is Aura by Mugler. Next up, I have a fragrance that I would consider one of the sexiest in my collection, featuring notes of honey, cherry, can you guess what it is? Scandal by Night by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Hmm. This is a unique one sweet sticky deep dark the trail that it leaves is amazing mm. yeah this is a sexy one this attracts a lot of attention i oh yeah and on my skin this just does something else this is fantastic so yeah that's scandal by night by jean paul gautier so in preparation, whoop, I was going to say, hold on, let me 
clean this bottle. <laughs> okay, in preparation for today's video, I wanted to wear one of the fragrances that I would be discussing today, and I have it in my hands right now. And that is Hypnos by Lancome. And you know, this one challenged me in ways that I wasn't expecting it to challenge me. I bought it, well I tried it in store and I tried it on my skin and it pulled very fresh shampoo like on my skin and I'm like oh perfect because I was looking for a fragrance that would be my like fresh shampoo scent. But then when I purchased it and really started exploring and then at that point of purchasing I had also developed my developed and at the time of purchase I also developed my nose I was like this ain't shampoo like I mean it still has that quality to it but it's I would say this is a very unique fragrance because there's an almost there's a warmth to it but it's almost like unexplainable. And I know there's a note of passion flower, which is an imagination, wait, which is an, how do they word it? Basically, it doesn't, passion flower doesn't have a scent in its natural form. So the passion flower note is one that was made up by science. And maybe that's what makes it so mysterious. And again, strange to me, but in a weird, well, strange to me in a wearable way. And I was almost gonna give this, I almost was gonna give this one away because I was like, I can't wear this, this is too much. I thought, me sniffing it like that right now and not like gagging is impressive because at one point I was like, this is too much for me, too much. But I got over it. Yeah, this is cool. It's just a very unique, and I mean, even the, the name and then the color of the juice, everything about it, I think screams mysterious to me. So that's Hypnos by Lancome. So the last perfume that I want to share with you is L'Extase Rose Absolute by Nina Ricci. And this is a one of those times when I bought a fragrance, blind bought a fragrance because it was hyped up and people were having trouble finding it. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get my hands on it. And I did. And to be honest, when I first smelled it, I was like, this ain't for me because it smelled very mature, spicy. And intense, which is funny because I'm as I grow in my fragrance journey, I find that those are qualities that I'm warming up to more and more. So this is a I would say a spicy rose fragrance. The Taif rose note that's in this fragrance, I think lends to the spicy, maybe even smoky quality that I get in this perfume. But yeah, this is total like vamp, sex elator. Love it. Yeah, so that's L'Extase Rose Absolute by Nina Ricci. So now I want to share with you my fragrance mist that I have and I I have a lot of mists that I think have that dark vampy mysterious quality to it and I'm excited to share them with you. So let's see. I guess I could Okay, I can start with this one. I really just want to show you for the packaging. <laughs> this is the Vampire Blood Diamond Shimmer Mist by Bath & Body Works. I think it's still available online, maybe in stores too. Um, this is one of the kinds of releases they have. Like maybe last month they did it for the Halloween season. And what I like about this, not it ain't dark, but let's just say the, the packaging makes it fit this video. But yeah, it's... I think there may be plum in this, I can't remember, but um, it is pretty. And the shimmer, let's just do it now. Can you see, can you see? Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I, I like this. Yeah, it is pretty. And I didn't really wear it much because I don't really wear shimmery mists like that, but 
It is fun. It's a, it's a fun one. So this is the Vampire Blood Diamond Shimmer Mist by Bath & Body Works. Next up, I have Black Amethyst. And this is a, it's a patchouli, yeah. To me, this is a, I would consider this a fruit chuli. So that's one where there are fruity notes and it's patchouli dominant. Even though there are other notes listed, I'll just put them on the screen. But this is a sexy, dark, long lasting fragrance that is quite strong for a fragrance mist. Definitely will say that. And it has this mysterious quality to it and it just, it just, it smells like the bottle. It smells like the bottle. So that's Black Amethyst by Bath & Body Works. Next, I have a mist that I feel like is probably more on the mysterious side, and that is Be Enchanted. And again, the packaging, I think, plays a role in why I would say that. But there's, I mean, a very... fantasy kind of quality to this it's sweet but it's not generic at least not to my nose it's quite fruity but again the fruits are pomegranate and passion fruit which are two very sexy fruits but they're also I think quite dark yet bright balance balance so that's be enchanted by Bath and Body Works Next up, we have one of the newer mists to my collection that is still currently available in store, and that is Fairy Tale. And this is a unique one. It's, I had to warm up a little bit to this one, because personally to my nose, there's a note of aloe vera, and not aloe vera that you get in stores, like aloe vera as in the plant growing outside. We used to have them, and this smells just like that which is not a good thing, but this is loud, strong, but unique. I would say mysterious with this particular blend of notes. Very outdoorsy in the sense of it's smelling like forest-like. So that is Fairy Tale by Bath & Body Works. Next up, we have Dark Kiss. And you know what? I was hesitant on buying this one because I'm like, it has the same notes as La Nuit Tresor, but it's different. <laughs> I think there's incense that's listed, right? So there's incense, plum musk, black raspberry, burgundy rose, I mean, dark vanilla bean, all the notes scream dark. I mean, the name as well in the packaging. So it's sweet, I would say fruity. Is it? Yeah. I would say this is mysterious too, you know. Yeah, this is a good one. So that's Dark Kiss by Bath & Body Works. So next up, I want to share with you Forever Red and not only does the packaging scream vampy to me, but the notes are fiery pomegranate, red peony, rich vanilla rum, and oak wood. So it's deep, sexy, grown, mm, very nice, long lasting too. This is a good one. So that's Forever Red by Bath & Body Works. Next up, I have another fragrance mist that I guess you could really consider mysterious once again, and that is Twilight Woods. This is a relatively new mist to my collection. I was hesitant because woody fragrances aren't really my ting, but I'm learning to appreciate them more. And the note of cypress wood in here isn't too overpowering. Again, this has a very, yeah, mysterious quality to it. Mm. There's the berry notes, the other fruit notes, and then it's woody at the same time. It's not overpoweringly sweet or anything. It's, I would say, the perfect balance between fruity and woody. Yeah, this is very lovely. So that's Twilight Woods by Bath & Body Works. So 
So the final one I want to share with you is Chocolate Covered Cherry by Bath & Body Works. Now this is a chocolatey, boozy cherry scent that is like, I think this is fantastic. This is fun. It's dark. You know it's a milk chocolate that they say. I would say that the other notes make it deep. I'm like shoving my whole nose. <laughs> this smells so good. <laughs> yeah, I would say this is a boozy cherry chocolate scent, you know, as made very apparent by the notes I just listed. But yeah, so that's chocolate covered cherry. So there you have it. Those are the fragrances in my collection that I consider the darkest, most vampy, most mysterious fragrances in my collection. Leave a comment down below telling me what your darkest, most vampy, most mysterious fragrances in your collection are. I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and I'll see you later. Bye! <sighs> okay. I don't like how I look. Let's change it. So I do have some oils, perfumes, and fragrance mists. Fragrance mists. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs>